Our path to interpreting organic structures is stepwise. We must first understand the organic building blocks, which can include an atom type, its connectedness, its molecular geometry, its charge, and so on. Next, we need to understand how these building blocks can combine to form functional groups. And once we're able to identify the various functional groups, uh, we can understand how these functional groups and building blocks could all combine to form an organic molecule. The ability to quickly recognize functional groups in an organic structure is an essential skill and one that you will need to have in order to succeed in this course. The best way for you to develop these skills is to pause the slide and carefully study each of these functional groups on your own. But before you do that, there are a few lessons we can learn about each of these functional groups. For example, alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes are all hydrocarbons, meaning they're composed of only carbon and hydrogen atoms. An alkane is a saturated hydrocarbon, meaning that it does not contain any multiple bonds. An alkene is an unsaturated hydrocarbon that contains at least one uh, carbon-to-carbon double bond. And an alkyne is also an unsaturated hydrocarbon, but it must contain at least one carbon-to-carbon triple bond. If we move on and take a look at an arene, an arene is a six-membered ring composed of carbon atoms that contains a conjugated pi system, uh, meaning that between every double bond, there is a single bond. Halides are simply any single heteroatom that is uh, connected to a carbon atom, and uh, a heteroatom is any atom that is not carbon or hydrogen. In order to identify an alcohol, we must identify a hydroxyl group bonded to a carbon atom, and a hydroxyl group is simply an oxygen connected to a hydrogen. An ether involves an oxygen atom that is singly bound to two different carbon atoms. In considering an amine, we must look for a carbon that is singly bound to a nitrogen atom, but we must also determine whether the amine is a primary, secondary, or tertiary amine. The way that we do this is by taking a look at the nitrogen atom. For a primary amine, the nitrogen atom is only connected to one other carbon atom. For a secondary amine, we could see that the nitrogen is connected to two carbon atoms. And for a tertiary amine, we could see that the nitrogen is connected to three different carbon atoms. Therefore, uh, determining whether a, an amine is primary, secondary, or tertiary depends on the number of carbon atoms that a nitrogen atom is connected to. Other functional groups that you'll need to be able to recognize is the nitro group and the sulfide and thiol. Notice that a sulfide is very similar to an ether, um, except for the oxygen atom is replaced by a sulfur atom. And a thiol, instead of having a hydroxyl group, is a sulfur uh, connected to a hydrogen, which in turn is connected to a carbon atom. One of the most common categories of functional groups involves carbonyl carbons. A carbonyl carbon simply involves a carbon atom that is bounded to an oxygen atom via a double bond. The various ways in which a carbonyl compound can be incorporated into an organic compound will yield uh, several different functional groups, all of which contain a carbonyl carbon. An aldehyde is just a carbonyl uh, carbon that has a carbon and hydrogen atom attached. A ketone is a carbonyl carbon with two carbons attached to it. A carboxylic acid is a carbon attached to a carbonyl carbon, which in turn is connected to a hydroxyl group. An ester is very similar to an ether, only uh, the oxygen atom is connected to a carbonyl carbon on one side rather than just a regular carbon atom. Amides involve a carbonyl carbon connected to a nitrogen bond, and similar to the way in which we classified amines, uh, we could also classify amides as being primary, secondary, or tertiary. An acid chloride is a carbonyl carbon that has a, a chlorine attached. And finally, an acid anhydride it kind of looks like a cross between an ester and an ether, but notice it's an oxygen atom surrounded by two carbonyl carbons. To finish up, we'll take a look at a few of the more unique uh, functional groups, each of which is still very common in fields such as biochemistry or even in nature. An imine is very similar to a carbonyl carbon except for that a uh, nitrogen atom replaces the oxygen atom. An epoxide involves a three-membered ring uh, composed of uh, two carbon atoms and one oxygen atom. A phenol is basically the combination of an arene that has a hydroxyl group connected to it. And an aniline is basically a combination of aniline that also has an uh, amine functional group present within it. As I stated before, being able to recognize the various functional groups as well as the building blocks that make them up is an essential skill that you need to possess before you ever begin to interpret an organic structure.